Hey, this is Darren. I was waiting for my ear Bluetooth to uh, kick in. I forgot to turn it on. Duh. Do that before, Darren. Hey, do you know you are 100% responsible between you and what? And what, Darren? And what? I'm glad you asked. Such a great question. Thank you for asking. Uh, I'm sitting here at my computer and I had a call today with, I have a big keynote here in Vegas on Tuesday, and it's for Miracle Ear and their franchisees, and it's for the people who work the front desk and for the consultants and the franchise owners. Uh, anyway, they're doing a training on Monday all day, and then they're having a, a separate segment just for a certain group of them on Tuesday. So I'm the opening of the second day. So when I got on the phone today with the, my contact, I asked a whole bunch of questions and I wanted to get to know the group. See, you know your content. You know what you're trying to say. You know your life experience. But every audience is different. They get together for a different reason and a different purpose with a different intention. So do you know that you are 100% responsible for being the bridge between your content and their world, your content and their world. They don't know you, they don't know your world. You know, it's one thing when I go and speak at Toastmasters, I know that world, I know I grew up and that's my family, that's my, uh, my community, so I get them. That's easy, NSA, that's easy. But when I'm speaking to any other organization, outside of that, I need to take the time. So for example, one of the things that I do is, when I was talking to the event planner today, he asked me what questions I had. And so I was digging, 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 taking notes, taking notes, taking notes. And it's so important because I got to understand, you got to get on the pulse. One of the secret questions that I always ask is what frustrates them? What bugs them? See, when you can get into their mind and understand what's painful to them, what, what is top of mind for them, it goes a long way for you and I to making that bridge and connecting to that world. One of the other secret things that I do, or not so secret, I guess, but you might not know, that I asked him for, I want at least five of the front desk people and five of the consultants uh, for Miracle Year who work in the franchise, uh, five of them of each, because I want to have some conversations. And this does two magical things. Number one, it helps me understand their language. Uh, so if you've ever spoken to a credit union before, uh, you know that if you've ever been a credit union member, you'll know you're a member, not a customer. So I couldn't go on stage at a credit union and say, uh, hey, you know, you got to take good care of your customers. Well, that, that doesn't register for them. And they'll start looking at each other like, what does he not understand us? And so we don't want to now, they don't expect that we know their whole business. You know, we're outside consultants, we're outside experts. But we still, it's still our responsibility to get to know them. So I also called up the website and I'll do some more research on that. I'll take some more notes. I want to hear their language, their acronyms, the terms that they use. What are those hot spots? Because I need to do that. Like I know my content, my content is my content, but I might think of another story. So for example, this is franchisees. So I ran it past him. And I'm going to tell my story of are you a farmer or an MBA that when I started with Subway, I thought my ego was in the way. I thought I knew better than the system. So for them, I can say some things that they can't say, but I was a franchisee, different franchise, but it's a great story and a powerful story. But I asked him, is this a message that you want me to convey? And he said, yeah, that'd be great because they're the head of the franchise. They can't, you know, they, of course they want you to think that. But when it comes from somebody who made the mistake, which I did, and let my ego get in the way, it's different. Hey there, Abby. Hey, Ryan Reed. Thanks for joining me. Saw Steve was on a minute ago. Uh, so we have to take the time to learn about them because they're not going to necessarily come to us. We have to go to them. So I might pull out one story that I normally tell and put in one of their stories. The other secret bonus thing that when I have these conversations with people over the next couple of days, I always ask them, give them a heads up that are gonna be calling. Otherwise, they, they'll, they might be shocked or what? Why are you calling? What's your purpose? They won't get it. So when they get the heads up, before he gives me their name and phone numbers, it goes a long way to understanding and they'll be more open too. They'll be less protective, which is important because I want to get the real information. I want to get a, get the good information. The other cool thing this does 
is they're going to start talking about me as they go to the event. They, they know their buddy franchisees and be like, hey, the keynote speaker called me and, and you know, kind of like having a conversation. So then a conversation will happen. So I'm building rapport and I'm not even on stage yet. Uh, so that's a huge bonus. Another thing that I will do is they're going to be meeting all day and having another training from corporate on Monday. So I asked if I could sit in. Once in a while they say no because it's proprietary information. Most of the time, like today, when I was talking to this gentleman, he said, absolutely, that'd be great. He's actually shocked. Now, I had this funny story. I won't mention the person's name, but I did this totally, very much customized presentation, customized keynote for one of my clients early on. And this other speaker, highly paid pro, who was a mentor to me, was way ahead of me and gave me advice. And this person called me and they were like, why did you do so much customization? Now they're going to expect me to do that. Hey, I, I, I learned from Vinny, my Vegas headliner, then Boston headliner. He said, look, we're, we're in the business for us. We're in the business to take it. Now, I never want to diss another speaker, and I didn't mean anything negative by it. I just wanted to do the work to be the bridge between myself, my expertise, my stories, and their world. A lot of speakers won't take the time to do that. So early on, it's one of the ways that you can differentiate as you become an emerging speaker. Uh, do whatever you can to bridge that gap. Taking the time to put in a little bit of effort when they start talking about you, when they see you there a day early and they're like, who's that middle-aged bald guy that we've never seen before? They see that I take the time to be with them. That goes a long way to creating that connection. Remember, without the connection, you got to connect before you can educate, entertain, or inspire. So, you are 100% responsible. Do your research on their website. Ask the, the people who are going to be there. But understand who's going to be there. Is it all front desk people? Is it all consultants? Is it all owners? Uh, the owner is going to have different frustration from the front desk people. The front desk people are going to have a different frustration from the consultants. So, it's... I need to know that, well, is it half the audience? Is it a third of the audience? I can't walk up there and think the wrong thing or I'll look like an idiot and people will lean away. So it's our job. We are responsible to be the bridge between ourselves and our audience. So that's it for today. See you tomorrow. Uh, this was 87. Tomorrow will be 88. So remember, inspire by example. Do people see the life that you live off stage and want to know more from you? Uh, uh, number two, remember Mark Brown always says, you have a story to tell and someone needs to hear it. See you.